Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me Abhijit Ayer Mitra and we are going to discuss the state of indigenous industry as far as arms, ammunition, gun manufacture and so on and so forth in India, how it is doing and what are all the challenges it's facing, what are its wins, where it needs to do more work, where it has been stellar, the whole nine yards. We've been talking about how India needs to get self-sufficient. We have been talking about how India needs to be more uh, aware of its own needs. After all, it's a country of 1.3 billion people. Surely there should be some brilliant scientists and engineers who can uh, reverse engineer any uh, foreign equipment that uh, India buys at an exorbitant price. To know all about this and more, Abhijit Ayer Mitra is going to uh, walk us through some of these things, some of the competition that these people face, the kind of skullduggery that happens. Abhijit, can you walk us through uh, what the state of industry of arms and ammunition manufacturers is in India and the recent deal that is being talked about of purchasing artillery guns from Elbit Systems? So, you know, the entire nexus here is so obvious. Nobody is even outraging about the fact that we're buying a foreign gun when we've already got Indian guns available. And you've bought two other kinds of howitzers. Now, generally, you've got a 155mm howitzer category, right? Uh, you are now, you have the Bofors 155mm. You have bought uh, on tracked vehicles, that to say, to say, that look like tanks, you know, with the uh, chain on the uh, uh, wheel, on metal wheels. Uh, you've bought the Korean K9. And now you're looking for a different truck-based cannon and you have shortlisted the uh, Elbit uh, 155 mm. And apparently nobody at the defense ministry and nobody in the army seems to uh, think it even remotely weird that you're going to have two completely different guns, uh, three actually, because the third one is the M777, uh, 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 seven, 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 the light uh, 155 mm howitzer that we bought from America. Now, why is it that in one gun, one caliber of gun, you need three different kinds of guns? One sourced from BAE systems in America, one sourced from uh, 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 Korea, and one sourced from Israel now, or France, if the French company had won that competition. No audit done of that. The uh, controller and account, uh, 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 controller and auditor general also want to get into that. But the question here is: Was the defense ministry sleeping, or was the army sleeping, or is it uh, actual uh, corruption or bribery? Now, usually, what happens with these cases? Incompetence is usually a mask for corruption. Okay. Now, think of it this way: You have three different guns. Hopefully, they're all NATO standards, so you will use the standardized ammunition, right? But each gun has its own specific quirks and things like that. So each ammunition is optimized to perform with only one kind of gun. They can all fire it, but they're not optimized for that kind of ammunition. The second thing is all the spare parts, the barrel is just one. The, the similarity ends with 155 mm, right? The rest of it, you have to come up with different logistics and spare parts and maintenance for every single one of those guns. Right. Now, why was this even accepted in the first place? Why couldn't you get an M777 based uh, 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 mobile gun, both on truck and on uh, uh, track? Uh, we don't know. And what is the real scandal in all of this is DRDO claimed that they had reverse engineered the Bofors gun, number one. Number two, Kalyani, which is one of the local defense manufacturers, they have a local 155 mm gun. And the third is Tata. Tata also has a domestic 155 mm gun. So you have three domestic 155 mm guns available. Okay. Mind you, the DRDO went out of its way to sink the Kalyani and uh, Tata product. Because all the shooting ranges, the firing ranges are controlled by the government. They wouldn't give these guys permission to come test their weapons here. So they have to take the weapons out of the country, test it out of country and then bring it back. And after jumping all these hoops, 
it is now going to be given to a separate company so imagine you have ignored three competent companies in india including surprisingly drdo i don't know how they uh, developed that competence but they did and you are getting three completely different guns to suit something that should have had a commonality now you look at it shreen i think anybody who even runs a small business you know a chota uh, uh, kirana dukan ka baniya so to say knows the commonality factor right he will buy all his metal dabbas from the same place because he wants the same size that 5 liter metal ka dabba to store his dal his uh, uh, tuwar dal his urad dal his uh, all other kinds of dal and his rice to put on display but these guys apparently don't so understand what is happening here you are buying three different guns so that you will never get economies of scale you will never get any technology transfer you will never be able to manufacture any of them and on two of these the ship has already sunk because you've already made the mistake you've already bought the m777 you've already bought the korean uh, uh, howitzer and now you're going to buy the lbit howitzer okay it is just the most shameless kind of incompetence and mismanagement that you can see happening out here and as we well know there is no such thing as incompetence in india incompetence is just a mask for corruption so um the the three indigenous uh, guns that you mentioned now there must have been a tender that would have specified that all these metrics have to be met uh, abhijit do you have any idea if these three indigenous manufacturers met those uh, standards so here's the thing with all of these guns they are all qualified to do the job the way these people tinker around is and this is you know this is the crux of the case against augusta westland that they deliberately tinkered it in a certain way so that only one would get through and this seems to be a common practice that the corruption happens either pre or prior now this may not be corruption also okay it it can be a genuinely one of those clueless babus and clueless uh, see the military doesn't understand economics and the babus neither understand economics nor do they understand management nor do they understand the military but they are the cream of the crop well modi loves them to death but then you know he seems to have a great affinity for mediocrities and third raters so it's like is uh, he's got two undeniable talents one is uh, picking third raters and the second is picking uh, 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 you know uh, winning elections i mean he actually thought hasmukh adiya was competent enough phd in ayurveda competent enough to run the economy so uh, best of luck to you but look i mean there's no way out of this these guns assume that they even didn't meet some requirements the assumption of indigenization always is that you accept a slightly inferior product and then you impose a certain r and d you say look i will give you a monopoly um i will lock in your contract for the next 20 years but then you you have to keep constantly improving your product we will guarantee you this minimum order and then you must deliver xyz they won't do that and again it's gone to a foreign company see at least with your arjun tank i can say you, you know you can say that it was an inferior product we can't choose it so on so forth with this what was the problem okay the margins out here weren't even that great so there is something very 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 wrong because even if you look at the dpp there was the make in india category and the by uh, 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 what the um, uh, developed in india the developed in india not make in india or buy abroad I, i forget all these categories even under that when you had a domestic product why have you gone abroad and mind you the tata gun and the kalyani gun are very good guns the drdo gun is a reverse engineered bofors gun and the bofors gun mind you that same bofors gun that we bought in 1982 83 84 i forget when is that same design is the basis of the latest swedish artillery 155 mm truck based gun called the archer the the loading is now automatic the mount is automatic the stabilization is different and things like that all of that has gotten modernized but the barrel and the gun manufacturer are exactly the same so what were you thinking uh, this fundamentally there's just something so wrong with the system and this seems to have completely bypassed the entire uh, scrutiny mechanism i don't know why um 
in terms of um, performance, you said that, uh, I mean, I, I didn't quite get the answer if they measured up to the requirements or again, like you said, that the requirements were skewed in a particular manufacturer's way. Um, maybe we can do a little bit more digging no, into no, this. No. Let's be clear about one thing. Mm. Barrel to barrel, all these guns would have met the requirements. Okay. There wouldn't have been a single gun that wouldn't have met the requirements. Where some might have screwed up in the requirements would have been the weight categories. Because uh, reducing the weight of certain guns is one of those uh, tricky things, right? Which still then begs the question, why do you want X gun X way kind of thing? Right? This is the kind of logistics complications that led to the defeat of the Wehrmacht. You know, the Germans were so, I, I had this, I still have this friend whose uh, grandfather was a um, German submarine uh, electrician. And you know, he was telling me that for one submarine, because everything was so over precision engineered, they needed to have 8,000 different kinds of screws available on every submarine. Imagine 8,000 kinds of screws on one submarine, which is already claustrophobic, as opposed to say, you know, just having four or five different kinds of screws. No. Uh, so th th this is a constant mistake we keep making. So th there was nothing. I can guarantee you there was nothing in the M777 or the Elbit uh, or the uh, Korean uh, cannon, how it's a, that justified bypassing an Indian manufacturer or that justified breaking logistical uh, 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 economies of scale or manufacturing economies of scale. So where does one start uh, looking into this? For example, if uh, it's our hope that the PMO office looks at this and then starts asking some pertinent and relevant questions, where would they start looking for to try and find out why the people who selected these guns chose to ignore the indigenous guns? Look, the problem with the PMO is that they micromanage so much. It's a bureaucrat's dream come true mm. because they can't macro at all. They keep getting bogged down in micro details. Okay, so who in the PMO does opportunity costing? Who says maybe the local Kalyani was uh, two tons overweight? Maybe the local Tata had one kilometer rest range at the, uh, uh, for a VLAP shell. Uh, maybe the DRDO gun uh, did not have the ground clearance, had uh, three inches less ground clearance than uh, this particular uh, uh, manufacturer. But given that we want to standardize this and operationalize this and make this indigenous, these are opportunity costs that we are willing to accept. There is nobody doing the macro. Right? This is a management problem. Like you see, governance has gone to the dogs. Management is going to the dogs. This is not a government that is made for higher management. It is optimized to running a clerk system in a clerk's office. It is certainly not optimized to be running a country. Abhijit, I think you make an excellent point. See, one of the things that people worry about is, okay, so we stop buying from foreign manufacturers. We need to be able to have indigenous suppliers and you want to make sure that there is competition so that the price efficiencies are met. In this particular case, you have three providers, which means that India can effectively source its own needs for howitzers and they have enough competition also i mean spread it around make sure that the standards are met i mean what's not to like about this I, it just beats my mind and and you know if you remember a few i think a, a year or maybe a few months back we did a program on why the tejas may not be as good as uh, the jf-17 uh, because you know a modern fighter is a very complex undertaking that requires thousands of industries working together that requires enormous amount of input from your micro, medium, small sector. The way I describe it is, it's like a tree. This, the trunk of the tree is the product that you see, but you know the strength of the tree comes from those micro roots and the microfiber roots and all of that, which are your micro, medium and small sectors, which is where the innovation happens, right? It's a very complex thing. A gun, is not a, that much of a complex thing. Uh, 
so it is suited to your 70s 80s manufacturing there are only few things so so the barrel can be manufactured a lot of the stabilization and thing can be manufactured so on so forth that most of it can be done in house it is not something new tata manufactures trucks tata manufactures armor Tata clearly has the metallurgy skills for this. At most, you need to buy computers and think the firing computers and things like that from abroad, which technically you can also reverse engineer. Artillery is not such, uh, uh, you know, a complex technology. This was something that you should have been able to do in house, that you failed spectacularly to do in house, and when somebody does it in house. You ignore them and you still go for a foreign vendor, right? So there's something you, you want to indigenize where it is anthropologically and industrially impossible to indigenize, and where it is anthropologically and economically and industrially possible to indigenize, and you have to a large extent indigenized. You ignore your domestic manufacturers and go in for foreign shit. A lot of questions here, and I think uh, the important uh, takeaway from all this, Abhijit, and thank you very much for this. The important takeaway from this is that uh, there is 1.3 billion people, and somehow there is a system that wants to continue to import, which means essentially continue to take the cuts and bribes and whatever you have. I mean, surprisingly, the corruption, although on paper it may not look so big, that it's pretty endemic and systemic in India. And, and these kinds of things actually are betraying the truth. And, and I hope people who, who have the vision to see what is best for the country, see through, see this particular video and understand what is going on here. Abhijit, thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts on this. We'll be back. We'll talk about more. I have a gut feeling that something is going to happen on this one. Let's wait and see how this plays out. But uh, before we sign off, please subscribe to our channel and also donate to our cause. And Abhijit, as always, pleasure to have you. Namaskar. Jai Makali.